somebody needs to edit this interview, which theoretically, after pressing the stop button, could, could be exactly. Yeah, you feel my pain. I feel your pain. However, this is a Synity Gear News video supported by B and H and CVP. I'm here with Victor from Fujifilm. Victor, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm really well. And one thing has changed since we last talked. What is that? Uh, it's uh, it's the only facial hair I can grow. You know, so I decided it was a joke. Uh, I did it over the summer, and now it's November. So now it's November, and I'm gonna probably keep it. It's fun. Okay, so it's the real thing. Yeah, it's a real. It's definitely the real thing. Yeah. But we are not here to talk about fashion or moustache, or even November, Movember. We're here to talk about the grip that you have for the X-H2S. With this grip, you can actually send images and videos directly to the cloud. You literally can record to the cloud. And I would like to float this again, because it's, it's, it's really it's an incredible development. Tell me a little bit about this uh, possibility or this uh, functionality. So, um, well, thanks for asking. And uh, I think the coolest thing about it is that we partnered with Adobe uh, to be the cam world's first digital stills camera to have a native camera to cloud integration for Frame.io. And what that really means is that it allows me to take this camera anywhere where I can have a Wi-Fi connection and upload the images straight from the camera to the Frame.io cloud servers. And it's not going to my phone first and then to the servers, it's not, coming home and, and downloading it to the cloud. It's from the camera, straight up, with an internet connection. And I, I need this grip to do it, but because the grip facilitates this, the connection speed, we're able to get videos and stills up in, in a relatively you know reasonable short amount of time. It's really fun. Between us, nobody is listening. This is an incredible development. Do you see future cameras actually doing that type of thing on our regular basis because obviously the key point here is the Wi-Fi connection. Well, I've been actually asking that same question of myself the entire week here, right? I'm, I'm here in Japan, I'm roaming. I'm on a mobile connection and I'm roaming. And I'm thinking, is it even gonna be practical for someone to use a hotspot connection while they're in the field to get these files up? And, and thank God Fujifilm is paying my phone bill right now because I'm able to get not just videos and stills up, I'm, getting, I'm able to get my RAWs and my JPEGs up to the cloud. And in a pinch, I can get a, a full HD uh, video file up as well, right? And, and I think what the, the, the takeaway here is, yes, the grip needs Wi-Fi, but with, with a, a hotspot connection, with your mobile phone, you can get the file somewhere, right? And I think I'm thinking about news gathering people that are in um, conflict zones, I'm thinking about um, you know, media agencies. I'm thinking about individuals who have to get the file up, not just to get the file to their to their their news outlets, but maybe for safety, for backup, for for situations where they might get the card taken away from them. Right. So it's it's a really powerful tool that can be utilized in a in a variety of different ways on technology that exists today. Let's talk about practicality. The upload itself, it's being done in what resolution or what codec? So I'm gonna talk about that exactly in two halves, okay? So when we're talking about upload speeds, um, let's start talk, talking about, first of all, workflows, right? So in photography, we have a raw workflow. Um, I can comfortably say that our raw files from, from this camera and foreseeable other cameras would be able to be uploaded through uh, the Wi-Fi connections that would be available very, very readily and easily, right? We could, you could live and exist in a raw workflow quite well. I think for, um, for video, it's gonna be more of a proxy-based workflow. You're not gonna be able to, to upload full res using our Wi-Fi connection, because it's Wi-Fi. Maybe you could if you uh, were, were uh, cabled in through the ethernet connection. Um, but I think, like, practically speaking, it is probably better to go with a, a proxy-style workflow, uh, where you're uploading proxies to Frame.io, and then beginning your edit that way, and then syncing and linking your, your assets once your full res files come to you. After the video file is inside Frame.io, who can watch it and how? So once the file hits the Frame.io servers, that's where actually the magic really starts to happen because anyone who's invited to the project, anyone who's got permissions to the project, anyone with a review link or a presentation link can see the, the, the assets 
in varying degrees of, of access. So if I am a, a collaborator on the project, I can see a deeper level than someone who's just been given a presentation link. If I'm part of the team, then I get more levels of access, right? And, and the whole goal of this is who gets downloads, who gets comments, who gets to see um, the team comments, who gets to see collaborator comments, and it's all designed to make the, the process of getting the edit together easier. Let's talk about pricing because at the end, what you need is the grip, which is for how much? The grip is 999, in addition to the cost of the body. And I'm, and I'm hoping that you know, as we get closer to, to having the free firmware uh, download available sometime in April, um, that we'll be able to, to really organize a way for our loyal fans who have already invested in the system to, to, to be able to, in their local markets, find a grip on, on, a, on a promotion or something. I, you know, that's still up in the air. But we because it's amazing. Obviously, you have to, you, you, you give the possibility, but for people to be hooked on it, it's a, it's a different thing, to believe that it's really working. So 999 for the, for the group itself, and obviously you, you need to have some type of uh, collaboration with Frame.io, Adobe, and register to their service too. Yes, so um, Frame.io is part of the Adobe Creative Cloud services. So if you have a Creative Cloud subscription, um, that's the monthly ones, the full, the, the full subscription. Um, it, Frame.io comes natively with it, and also Camera to Cloud. If you have the full uh, versions of Premiere and After Effects, you do also get Camera to Cloud and Frame.io as well. Um, I think that they're, I can't speak for Adobe, but I think they're working to provide other levels of access to Frame.io through other purchases. Um, I, I don't know exactly what that is, but I do know that they're very committed to the partnership that we have with them. And we have a lot of photographers, right? And our photographers are, are really excited to use this tool because I think that's going to change their lives to be able to get images to the cloud. As an X, XH2 user, not an XH2S, what is the possibility that I will see this type of workflow being implemented with the XH2? So that's a great question, and I think that we have a commitment to seeing what we can do to have this technology uh, put into our future cameras and into cameras that, that are able to handle the tech, right? Um, the, uh, the ability for a camera to handle not just a Wi-Fi signal, but to be able to transmit and, and receive data back and forth, that's the, uh, that's the thing we're, we're, we're just evaluating right now in a lot of our, our products. Um, I can certainly say that we're looking at XH2. You know, it's in XH2S, so I'm confident that, that we'll, we'll have an answer soon, and we're working on it, and I think it's going to be something that, that we are really committed to, um, but I don't have a, I don't have a long term, like a short-term answer on that one. As long, as long as it's not never say never, or actually it should be never say never, then, then I should be happy with that. Good, Victor, anything before I say uh, thank you and goodbye? Did I forget anything about this whole workflow process or actual service? You know, I, I've been with this idea and this project uh, since last April, right? And because I've been living and breathing the idea of cloud-based workflows since April, um, I think that I'm very, I oftentimes am the most excited person in the room when I talk about this, right? So uh, I think for me, what I really want to encourage anyone watching the video is what does the world look like to you when you're at a wedding all day and you're making images or you're making video and you're, 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 you're putting in 12 hours, you're putting 14 hours in and then you get home and then what would it, what would it feel like to not have to download a card, right? That, as something as simple as that. So you don't have to sit down at your desk and download cards. I mean, you've been walking around here all... Let's talk about me. Somebody needs to edit this interview, which theoretically, after pressing the stop button, could be... Exactly. Yeah. You feel my pain. feel your pain. However, we can talk after you uh, stop rolling, and we'll see what we can do here. Great. Okay, Victor. Again, thank you very much for the time and for the information. I think it's a really breakthrough and... Who knows what the future will bring, but thank you again for um, yeah, giving the information. Guys, thank you very much for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.